what are you shooting with today or what, what are you working on what today? are we working on today well uh, i'm starting a youtube channel okay so we're here today i'm doing a video on making use of light okay uh, any, so, any tips any tip well you're gonna you, yeah. you'll see Streets giveth and the streets taketh, and right now they have not giveth. When's when's it go live? When's it go live? Uh... Greetings, world of YouTube. I'm Alan Shaller, and here we are in Hyde Park. And today's video, as you may have gathered from the title, is about light. How I like to use light in particular. You can have the best subject in the world and rubbish light, and I think you won't make as good a picture as you could with a not such great subject and the best light ever. Your Lightroom or your Capture One or whatever, or your film, uh, that shouldn't be where you're looking for the photo. You should be looking for the photo at the time when you're there. Oh, that was a good one! <laughs> oh, oh, onwards! I'm going to break down the way I like to use light using a few objects in front of me. This battery representing the subject, this camera representing myself with my camera, and this orange representing the soleil, the sun. I'm going to give three examples here. First is when the subject is in front of you, the light is behind you. The light is hitting your subject face on. Everything in front of you is going to be a similar exposure. That photographic technique I've employed often with pictures such as this. I've often found myself using light behind the subject uh, as, the, as my kind of signature way of, of, of shooting. It's where the subject is here, where the camera is here, facing this way, and the light is here. You're shooting, you have to expose for the sun. It's, it's often called cinematic lighting because in cinema, a lot of the time, there'll be a light placed behind. And then, of course, there is side light, where the sun is to the side of your subject which is kind of like an in-between of the two. It's, it's a lot more dependent on how the subject's interacting, what direction they're facing in, what direction you're facing in. And examples of side lighting are this. Another important thing about using light, the, with the position of the sun in the sky to your subject. So when the sun is high up above your subject, you're gonna get a lot shorter shadows it's a much harsher kind of condition. You've got a lot of shadows on the face. The nose will create a shadow down here. It's not flattering. It's not the kind of light that you'd want to do a portrait in, but it can produce interesting results such as these. And the magic is winter when the sun never goes above the kind of midpoint in the sky. When the, the lower the sun is, the longer the shadows become, and the more intense the highlights become as well. So the, the light around your subject, you end up getting those super high contrast uh, rim light effect shots. Let's have a look at some of my images shot with flat light. Flat light is simply where the exposure is pretty even from the front of the frame all the way to the back. And those images look a bit like this. inspo. The plan is, is to go over there where we have similar subject matter but I'm shooting into the light. It's my buddy the heron. Uh, I really like photographing herons. Whoa. I'm a big fan of your work. Oh thank you very much. Like, I, I knew it was going to do something. Always nice to meet people who appreciate my work. Always nice. <laughs> The shot that I have in mind here involves three elements. The sun being out, the birds flying around like crazy, and somebody feeding the birds, which you shouldn't do, but people do anyway. I've uh, brought along my good friend and photographer, Antalya. Here she is, say hello, Antalya. Hello. 
thirdly, me in the right position, which is probably going to be crouched down with a very wide lens. So here I'm using a 16, 1, 6 millimeter. I want to get the birds, the mania, the action, and the light all streaming in to make a kind of cool shot. Okay. Yeah, this is good. This is good. Come on, birdies. Hold out a nice long bit across off. Go on. Courage now. Okay, we need more mania. Do I get shot on it? There we go. Now hold it out. Hold it out. Bigger bit, bigger bit, bigger bit. Yes. And again. Here we go. 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 Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> It peed on me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's proper backlight. Now I'll do an example of side light. The light, look, make sure you head to see the light, room lights. This, this light here is what I'm going for. What's important, so I've got the sun coming in this angle, but the bit that's crucial is that this area in the background is shadowed. So you can generate massive amounts of contrast here. So check this out. Thank you. So what I'm doing is I'm metering off the brightest point, which is probably this part for him. And then I'm further exacerbating this by uh, exposure com compensation, crushing it down like two stops, maybe three stops. This kind of thing, I see people like scrubbing in Lightroom or like using a brush or like, you know, using some sort of fakery to achieve this. This is the way that you do it. You need light in a certain way. And often I will set up in a certain place and I'll wait for someone to interact with that. Mm. That is Fortnum and Mason. That is a peacock. Welcome to my exhibition here at Fortnum and Mason. Whoa. Wow. So here we are in the three and six bar on the third floor at Fortnum and Masons. Might be worth noting, but there's still going to be reflections from around the room. But let's talk about the lighting behind some of these pictures. Exhibit A, the sun. So this shot was very backlit. I purposefully waited for the sun and positioned myself in a position where the sun was quite central. And then it was easy to silhouette somebody against that. I've even got the, the bursts of the sun coming through. So I'm metering for the brightest point, which is the sun. It's possible to backlight and actually get a lot of detail out of a frame. I often say that backlighting gives you options. The aperture was probably something obscene, like f22. I like low sun. When the sun's up here, it's, it just offers a different kind of shot, but I, I really love the low sun look. And uh, most importantly, it's for sale. Hi there, welcome to Fortnum and Mason. Can I interest you in some fine art prints? Are you open tomorrow? Um, yes. yes. This is a photograph that I called laser vision for obvious reasons. To set the scene, I was um, on the South Bank. I spotted this triangle of light. I knew instantly that I wanted to align someone's eyes with this. The problem was someone who's the right height, having good enough timing to execute it, and I didn't want anybody else in the frame. So this shot took a while, and the shape of the light, the triangle was getting smaller and smaller and smaller as each minute passed. So I was convinced that I was going to lose the shot. I was getting very irate. It was the perfect size for shooting on my 24 mm lens. In terms of lighting, this is about as side lit as a shot can become. So this picture was taken, I think in 2015 or 2016. It was one of my early shots on the, on the London Underground. The subject stuck out, like, obviously. There was a spotlight almost shining on her face, uh, which really helped out the shot. Uh, I was heading eastbound, which is why the picture's called Eastbound. This is an example of front lighting. Shooting on the underground is really ideal because you get like a conveyor belt of new people all the time. People are more concerned with getting home than, than what you're doing with the camera. So, you know, it's the classic example of finding a, a, an interesting moment out of a very ordinary scene. We had backlight, side light, and now front light. It's a pinball machine from ye olde days. Two 
two points. The more that you understand what it is that a certain lighting can provide you, the better you become as a photographer. And it's something that I'm learning every time I go out. It's something you can never, ever, ever feel like you've mastered. On a day like this with the sun out, there's a certain selection of images that we can get. On an overcast day, there are other kinds of images that are available. That way I can you know, try and create my look and my style and, sh and, and shoot in any kind of weather conditions, any time of year, any part of the planet I'm on. Don't know what, this is the best thing ever doing it. I love it. Bloody love it. Comment, like, and subscribe.